of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. Well, ever since Mike Leak was the number one draft pick out of Arizona State, his mentor, confidant, best friend has been Bronson Arroyo. But for the first time in both of their careers, they square off against one another tonight. Leak for the Reds, Arroyo as a Diamondback. And we welcome you to Chase Field in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Game two of this four-game weekend series. Reds trying to even it up in a game and a piece after being shut out in the series opener here last night and hi again everybody alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day I'm Tom Brenneman welcome as always to Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio Chris we've been talking about how much we miss Bronson Arroyo just having him as a red going back to spring training and now it's going to be odd to see him on the mound for somebody else it is some kind of unique Tom because how often have you ever seen never really a pitcher like Arroyo who's been around as long as Arroyo has here with the Reds come back and pitch against each and everybody in this lineup who he said in an interview yesterday I wrapped him in diapers and that's just about right you see what he has done and with the Reds since 1950 he ranks fourth in starts sixth in wins six in strikeouts I mean he was a mainstay in the clubhouse and he by his own admission says it's going to be something different being on the mound facing these guys he's got a lot of emotions going on and Mike Leak and Bronson Royal want to find out what they're going to do tonight. Well, each of them has five starts in the month of May. Mike Leak has pitched about as well as anybody under the radar in the National League this year, especially in the month of May. And Bronson Royal has turned it around after a tough start. Neither of them are getting a lot of runs. Mike Leak getting very few runs at all. But overall, this night will be a weird one. And we went to Bronson Royal and Mike Leak to talk to them about just that. It's a bizarre situation because this, this is the first time I'll pitch against an entire team that, you know, almost every guy on this team came up as a rookie when I was already an established major league player. You know, I've dressed these guys up in diapers, so it's like, um, you know, it's weird. It's like pitching against your best friend that grew up next door to you your whole life, you know, for the first time. So not just Leak, but, you know, everybody, Bruce and, and uh, Brandon and the whole crew. So it's it's uh, it's, it's weird. I, I might be out on the mound laughing tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to be kind of a strange experience. There was a little chuckle when I found out that I was going to be facing him. Um, but no, nah, I mean it'll it's tough in a way, and then it's also fun in a way. So I mean it's it'll be it'll be fun to face him. He took me under his wing, and we became good friends. And even though we have ten years between us, I mean we still we still have a friendship that that we uh, have continued to carry on. So you wonder for a couple of guys that have been around, especially Royo, for a long, long time. Mike Leach now starting to get a little experience under his belt where there'll be some butterflies for either or both here tonight. Now Brian Price none too happy about the outcome last night. Plenty of changes up and down the lineup. Jim Day will talk more about that when we return.
you can't keep trying the same things and expect a, a different result. And baseball in some ways changes, and we know that these guys are, are they're grinding right now. We know it's frustrating, and everyone's frustrated. Um, there's not a lack of effort by any means, but there are, and there is a lack of result. And that was Brian Price, as you saw last night, and he flirted or hinted that he was going to shake up the lineup, and he indeed did that. We'll take a look at the full lineup coming up, but one eye opener was Roger Bernardino starting at first. Put him in there because he's seven out of ten against Bronson Arroyo in his career, but he has never played first base in a major league game. In fact, you've got to go back to extended spring rookie ball. A long time ago when he played in a competitive game, but he's been taking ground balls. We talked to him about playing first earlier today. I look at uh, the team and uh, asked me if we can play first base. And I was like, yeah, I know this. Uh, I did in the past, uh, feel a couple ground balls and stuff like that. But most of my careers, I've been an outfielder. But uh, I know I can go play out there. And, you know, like I said, I, I try to do my part and to help the team. The full shakeup of the lineup coming up. The Reds hope they're not snake bitten again tonight. It is Bronson Arroyo versus Mike Leak. It is Mentor versus Pupil. Reds and D backs next. Last night, just prior to the first pitch at Chase Field in downtown Phoenix, you heard some of the comments from Brian Price after the game last night. So how about those changes to the lineup? It's brought to you by Meyer. Hamilton in center, Schumacher in left, Phillips in second, Jay Bruce in right, Frazier at third. First career appearance at first for Roger Bernardino. Mezzarocco dropped to the seven hole, Santiago for Cozart in short, and Mike Leake on the mound. Familiar face, but now wearing an Arizona uniform, Bronson Arroyo. Now Bronson Arroyo tonight, he has won 142 games in the major leagues and makes start numbers 366. Been around a long, long time, of course, most of that time with the Cincinnati Reds. Billy Hamilton digging in. And a breaking ball is strike one. This one underway in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Great to have you with us back on the home front on this Friday night. Hope you had a good week and that your weekend is off to a good start. One and one to Billy Hamilton, who in a game last night went one for three. Reds only had three hits. As you know by now, Josh Colmenter, a complete game, three hit shutout, and faced the minimum number of batters in a nine inning game 27.
Fastball away, two and two on Billy Hamilton. Hamilton had the one hit, and Brian Pena had two hits. Everybody else blanked. And a tapper to Goldschmidt. Foot race to the bag, and Arroyo will win it. Arizona defensively presented by your four dealers. Enciarte gets a nod out of left field. The starts are very few and far between for him. Pollock in center, Para in right. Same infield we saw here last night, and their regular catcher back in the lineup tonight, Miguel Montero. Arroyo, his 15th season, as Chris mentioned, in the major leagues. He's made at least 30 starts for nine consecutive seasons. And 200 or more innings in eight of the last nine. The one year he didn't get it. As it is in there on the inside corner, a strike. That was a year you may remember. Arroyo left Arizona with Valley Fever. He had a back issue. And he wound up pitching 199 innings, one inning short, or it would be nine straight years at 200 or more. One and two on Skip Schumacher. Arroyo now 37 years young. Well, if the first two batters are any, any indication, the game plan, it seems like, for the Reds tonight is to be very, very patient. Billy Hamilton didn't swing the bat until he had two strikes on him here. Schumacher's running the count deep. Of course, Hamilton did not know Bronson Royal like a lot of the other guys. Schumacher has only known him as an opposing player. Same for Roger Bernardino, who's in the lineup, and Ramon Santiago. Hooked into right field, a base hit by Schumacher. It should be noted that the trio of Schumacher, Santiago, and Bernardino. Those three in the lineup tonight, after that base hit, are a combined 29 for 65 against Arroyo. That comes out to a batting average at 450. And it's no coincidence that all three of those guys will bat left-handed against Bronson Arroyo. Well, certainly here was a guy that Arroyo was already with the red legs when Brandon Phillips came on board coming over in that deal of course from the Cleveland Indians and they were there every step of the way going back to 2006 both arriving that very same year This will be an easy double play, which will end the Reds' first inning.
Ohio brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. By AT&T mobilizing your world. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good, it's Skyline time. Diamondbacks lineup, Pollock, Para, Goldschmidt, Montero back in a lineup, Prado, Hill, latter third of Owings, Enciarte, and Arroyo. And it's in there, strike one to Pollock. Having a good year. 306 batter, six homers, 15 batted in, 13 doubles, had his fourth triple of the year last night. He had a double and a three base hit in that game and added a stolen base, scored a pair of runs. Into left field, a base hit. Well, on 0 2 pitch, and Mike Leak stands out there on the mound in somewhat misbelief because he right he's thinking, well, why, how could I ever throw that slider on an 0 2 count right there? He tried to throw it right at the hitter's hip and have it come on the inside corner and freeze him. And he left it out there, and Pollock continues to do what he has started to do in this series last night get base hits. Pollock, the Diamondbacks team leader in stolen bases, he has seven of them in eight attempts. He stole third last night, you may remember, in the first inning in a throwing error on the very same attempt by Devin Mezzarocco. Allowed Pollock to get up and trot back home with the game's first run. Frazier a step in on the grass over at third. Gerardo Parra, the batter. 262, five home runs, 18 batted in. Well, we talk so much about Arroyo and facing his former team, and while this game is on the road, it is going back to the place he called home or the team that he called home, facing off against him tonight for a leak. Now he grew up in San Diego, California. What we talked about last night, collegiately pitched at nearby Arizona State University. Only four or five miles down the road from this very ballpark in Tempe. One and one apart. A lifetime Mike Leak on this against this Arizona ball club is two and zero. Oh. But the earned run average is up over six. So he hasn't really had over five starts, all that many terrific games. But he'd like to set that straight tonight, especially going against his good buddy at Bronson Arroyo. You know there's a little extra motivation there. Runner goes, check swing and a miss, throw to second is high. And that'll be a stolen base number eight for A.J. Pollock. Got a big jump that time. The Diamondbacks trying to stay out of the double play. That is something that has plagued the Reds the last four times they've had a runner here at first base in this series. Each of them has been erased with a double play. Yeah, all four hits of the series. The fly ball where Payne was thrown out trying to advance second to third, and then three ground ball double plays, including one off the bat of Phillips in the top of the first inning tonight. Two and one to Gerardo Parra. I mean, Mike Leak has to feel like every time he takes the mound that it might be a tough night, that he better throw a shutout. When you have a 1.7 ERA in five starts in the month of May and not a single win, three times in his last seven starts, he's been victimized by a blown save. He has not allowed more than two runs in any start here in the month of May. 
Two losses, two blown saves. Santiago did not look to third. It looked like from up here he may have had a shot. He takes the out at first, and the runner standing at third with one away in the inning. I think if that ball had been hit to his right where he moves a little bit towards third base, he would have taken that shot at third. But as it was, he wanted to make sure that he fielded it cleanly. He may have been somewhat shielded by the ball. You can see kind of a late reaction on his part to get his glove over there on his left knee to field it. I think he would just want to take the sure out here in the first inning. Solid veteran infielder. Uh, you know, hard to hard to second guess because he's been around and that's what his forte is, is playing defense. And I think he probably made a good call right there. Although if he did have to go a couple steps the other way, his play would have been a third. So now Goldschmidt, the leading run producer of this team, and a ground ball to short. Boy, that's how you get it done. You just put the bat on the ball and you bring in the guy from third base. Goldschmidt, RBI number 38. And Arizona, for a second straight day, scores in the first inning. Red defense presented by your four dealers. Schumacher to start in left. We talked about Bernardino. First time ever he has played in a major league game at first base. Reds down one nothing. Base is empty. Two outs in the inning. Or a minor league game. I mean, he says he's played in professional baseball at first base before. But when somebody brought up, then well, you have no record of playing in a minor league game at first base. He said, well, it must have been fall ball or instructional league or something like that. Line right. right back to the mound, and that's all for Montero and the Diamondbacks. But a scoring inning. They get a single, a stolen base, and a pair of ground balls. And at the end of one, Diamondbacks one, Reds nothing. I'm going to enjoy to pitch against these guys, especially because I'm older now and they're kind of coming into their prime. And so um, in a lot of ways, I feel a bit of an underdog. And so I, I'm going to have fun going out there and seeing if I can compete. And also, you know, a lot of these guys have watched me do what I've done over the last four or five years. And, you know, to actually for them to actually see it at the plate and, and, and see what your stuff is all about is kind of interesting as well. So. Part of our game storyline brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Well, 1 800 Elk, Ohio. Arroyo allowed a one out single in the first inning to skip Schumacher. Got Brandon Phillips on a double play to end the inning. And now Jay Bruce with a count of one and one. Big shift put on Bruce. And what's he do? Just dribble one down the line. Bruce going to make a turn and he will stop. With a leadoff single here in the second inning. 
Well, can't say he that he exactly planned it that way. It looked like he was looking to right and hits it to left. Oops, there it goes. But perfect placement for Bruce. A little squibber down the line has a lot of English on it too. And I'll tell you who makes a good play on this ball is Inciante. He was playing deep in left field, and he holds Bruce to a single on that. Well, now Todd Frazier, nine home runs, 27 runs batted in. And look to the fastball low. Frazier in the game last night, 0 for 3. Hit the ball very hard twice back up through the middle, but the Diamondbacks were playing him that way. And once more, Aaron Hill, the second baseman, cheats near the bag. Timeout was called before Royo turned it loose. Frazier bangs this one by Aaron Hill into center field. But Frazier hit the ball hard twice right back through the middle last night only to find Aaron Hill the second baseman in the way of that ball before it got into the outfield. And he's swinging the bat much better and he's just much more relaxed at the plate. Plenty of plate coverage right there as long as Frazier doesn't chase those pitches that are six to twelve inches off the plate outside. You make him he you if he, he's at the plate and if he makes the pitcher throw him strikes he'll have a good night. For now Roger Bernardina batting in the number six hole tonight and this one line in the center field another base hit. They are going to hold Bruce at third as Pollock fires over the cutoff man's head. And the Reds on three straight singles have the bases loaded. And nobody out here in the top of the second inning. Well, the first two guys at Brian Price has kind of surprised people by putting in the lineup. Bernadina playing first base, Skip Schumacher, mainly because of the numbers that they put up against Arroyo in the past, have both come through with base, hit, base hits. So if you add those two hits, those three, the Santiago still to come, are now 30 for 66 against Arroyo. As Rocco, six home runs, 20 runs batted in. He's cooled off for the first time this year, but not here. Launched into left center field, and it is a grand slam for Devin Mezzarocco. Well, so much for the patience theory. Why not just jump on the first curveball you see, especially if it's a hanger right around the belt? Devin Mezzarocco gets one right there. He launches. And the Reds, after being very patient in the first inning, have now have four hits off of Arroyo in the last five pitches. A four to one Reds lead. Grand slam by Devin. And now Tapper, what is it? Foul just in front of the bag. You know, it's been so long since the Reds have scored four runs in the first inning. You wonder if they know how to act in there in the dugout. Well, this is the first time in a long time they've scored that many runs in a game. Forget an inning. In fact, you look back. For the Reds in their last six games, they have scored three runs four times and twice have been shut out. So the last time they scored more than three runs in a game was when they beat the Cardinals a week ago tonight. From Ezeranko, that's his second career Grand Slam, if you're curious. He hit one off Chris Medlin on May the 24th. 2012 Medlin of course with the Atlanta Braves now 
Now back to a patient at bat by the shortstop Santiago. Full count. And a breaking ball, a strike three, and Ramon knew it. One out. Pitcher number 44, Mike Leak. So now these two get to face off against one another as pitcher and batter. Arroyo, ironically, has been the better hitter this year. As far as just number of hits, he has two more hits than League, but League's done more damage, a home run and a double. Mike, of course, with more hits than any other pitcher in Major League Baseball since he burst on the scene from Arizona State. One and one. Do you ever remember anybody in your career, Chris, somebody you got close to and, and, you know, maybe with one team and then you end up facing against them? Whether it be a position player maybe you got really close to or another pitcher? It happened to me. Actually, when I was pitching for the Padres, I got traded mid-year to the Montreal Expos. And then when the Expos or when the Padres ended up coming into Montreal, I faced them as a starter. And the only on the mound was my good buddy and teammate, and really my pal, best pal, uh, Tim Lawler. It was a tough night. And uh, you know you find yourself trying too hard. And in the case of especially throwing to your former catcher, in that case it was Terry Kennedy. I I, I always thought that you know you always had he's see, seen you so much that you have to fool him extra special. And sometimes when you try too hard, you hang one. That's what Bronson Arroyo did there to Devin Mesoraco. Oh, well, well, how did you do against Terry Kennedy that night? I, I, I can't really remember. It wasn't a great night overall. Kind of a typical night. <laughs> one and one to Billy. Bounced out to the first baseman his first time up. Vintage Arroyo curveball there. Although that one had a little more giddy up on it at 74. We've seen that baby drop into the high 60s. And that one. Hooked into right field, a base hit by Billy Hamilton. It's a good adjustment by Hamilton because of all the guys on the team, you think that Hamilton, his internal clock probably runs faster than anybody. I mean, the guy's the quickest guy in the stadium here. So it's so hard for him to stay back and slow down and negotiate a pitch that's coming in there, you know, slower than a high school pitch. So he goes down and gets himself a base hit, and Red's trying to keep this inning alive a little bit. Schumacher singled his first time up into right field. Royo going to pay a lot of attention. Hamilton 18 stolen bases in 24 attempts. The Brewers are blasting the Cubs. 8 to 2 that score Milwaukee they're only in the fifth inning at Miller Park and for a second straight game they pitch out and the throw down is offline and Hamilton will advance on to third so they pitch out and still can't throw him out Well, even on a pitch out things have to be perfect the pitcher has to deliver it the catcher has to have a quick pop time and the throw has to be on the money. So two out of three there for the Diamondbacks, and Billy Hamilton goes to third on the air. Didn't look like maybe the shortstop Owings was just a hair late getting to the bag, too. One and one is Schumacher. Starting to mention quickly about the Giants. They are taking it to the Cardinals again tonight. That's Adam Wainwright on the mound for the Cardinals tonight. Gave up. I think four or five runs in the first couple of innings. 
And ball will land in the glove of Inciarte. The Reds get the grand slam, second career slam for Devin Mezzarocco. And the Reds in front, four to one. At the first 25,000 fans receive in a role as Chapman bobblehead thanks to Coca Cola. That's the upcoming homestand with the Giants in town. 3 8 1 REDS. Log on to Reds.com or you can stop by most, not all, most Kroger locations in and around Reds country. Our team Prado to lead off for Arizona quickly behind 0 and 2, batting in the Diamondback second inning. Arizona scored in the top of the first off Mike Leak. The Reds get five hits, including a grand slam by Devin Mezzarocco in the top of this second inning and own a three run lead. Phillips. How about that play by Brandon Phillips? Oh, my goodness. And Prado just looking out at Phillips and saying, You have got to be kidding. Number two, Aaron Hill. Well, we've seen Brandon go to his left so many times, but this time he goes up the middle. Fields, throws, and nice play at the other end by Roger Bernardino. Man. That is just incredible. Well, just think about the, the overall effect that particular out has for Mike Leak. Instead of having a runner on to start the inning off, it's kind of a momentum inning. Red score four in the top of the second. Now you come back. Diamondbacks get the first guy on base with an infield hit. Uh-uh. Now with Brandon Phillips out there. It's an exaggeration to say we see it every night. And I'm as guilty as anybody of saying that. But it is not that far from being the truth. Certainly it's difficult for a series to go by with... Not just one, but it seems like two or three plays every series. You just marvel at Brandon Phillips. Gone swinging Aaron Hill, two away in the Arizona second inning. Drops a little curveball on him right here. Does Mike Leak? It really gets some fishing. This is right out of the book of Bronson Arroyo almost. Seemed like he dropped his arm angle just a hair on that. Perfect placement. Two down for the shortstop, Chris Owings, 275 batter. Down a strike. Owings was hitting second in the lineup last night when one for four had a double.
Owings last year was the Pacific Coast League, not only the rookie of the year, he was the PCL's most valuable player. Hit 330, had over 30 doubles. Now that's a hitter's league. He knocked in 81. But then when they brought him into the major league club for the final month in 20 games, he hit nearly 300. Well, he took the starting job from D.D. Gregorius, who after the Reds had traded him here, they took one look at Gregorius, and the start that he had with the Diamondbacks just said, man, this guy's going to be a fixture here for a long, long time. And then Owings came along. Gregorius went through a couple of injuries last year that opened the door for Owings. It's hard to imagine if he keeps playing the way he has played that anyone other than him will be at short for a while. And there's that pitch down and away from the right-handed batter. He chases and misses a perfect second for Mike Lee. We go to the third. Reds in front, 4-1. to one. Is the big contract Jay Cutler signed with Chicago stalling the Bengals talks with Andy Dalton? The Dayton Dragons mascot making a special connection with a young fan. And Ohio's very own Justin Lauer playing the memorial this weekend. Zach Jackson has that story. It's brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto. Drive safe, spend less. Brandon Phillips bounced into a double play his first time up. And that went into right center field. It'll fall in a hit. Seven hits for the Reds. Six of the seven have come in the last inning and one batter. Now, right now, the Reds are taking advantage of every mistake that Arroyo is making, even though that is not all that much of a mistake. That's good hitting by Brandon Phillips. Figures that after ripping a fastball foul down the left field line, he's going to get something with a wrinkle in it and takes it the other way. That one into left center field and a nice running catch by NC Arte. And that is the second out of the first out, I beg your pardon, of the inning.
Todd Frazier singled his first time up. Scored on the grand slam by Mezzarocco. That one is smoked into left field by a diving Martin Prado. And boy, the Reds indeed are squaring up their longtime former teammate thus far here tonight. Well, for more on Arroyo's appearance against the Reds, let's check in with Jim Day. Well, let's check in with our IGS bringing the energy feature in Bronson Arroyo's Major League Baseball ranked since 2006 among active pitchers. You can just look at the guy is as steady as they come, doesn't miss a start. And really helped along in his career by pitching coach Brian Price with the Reds. He said that he had the most intimate relationship he's ever had with a pitching coach with Brian Price, but it certainly started off on an interesting way. He said that he called a meeting very early on when Brian Price was named pitching coach and basically told him, and this takes a lot of guts, basically told him, I don't need a pitching coach. I am unorthodox. I'm my own man out there. Just help me refine me. Just work on strategy and opponent scouting reports. And boy, did it ever work. But man, you want to talk about guts telling the new pitching coach, I don't really need you. As it turned out, he was absolutely right. Now, that said, Brian Price still had major impact on him. As, as Arroyo said, he didn't try to change him, didn't try to make him a pitcher that he wasn't. But while Brian Price was with the Reds, and while Bronson Arroyo was with the Reds, Arroyo has reinvented himself at least three times as a Reds pitcher since coming over here in 2006. I mean, when he first came over from the Boston Red Sox in exchange for Willie Mopena, he was an overhand pitcher through some sidearm, but he primarily pitched north and south with a fastball and a big overhand curveball. And then little by little, he learned to throw a two seam fastball to the to the arm side, which is inside the right handers. Then he learned that two seam fastball inside the left handers and it all opened up new doors for him. Then he started throwing all different angles of every different pitch, not only dropping his arm on curveballs, but he started dropping his arm on fastballs on cutters. He invented pitches on the fly and he actually last year with the Reds threw a couple of sidearm change ups, which he kind of laughs about, but he says, you know, that it just keeps my creative juices going. Well, they're going to get one. Bernardina can run, and he is out at first base. A double play will end the inning. Middle of the third in Phoenix. Reds in front, 4 to 1. Sun Devil Mike Leak, take a look at him back in his days with ASU. It's not a bad year. 
Well, that 1.71 earned run average was second best in the nation, only to Steven Strasburg. Remember, Strasburg was taken number one in the draft that year, and Leak was taken by the Reds in the first round, number eight in the draft. They have already matched up this year in Washington. Of course, they grew up together. They played on the same Little uh -huh. League team in San Diego. That was one of those games where Leak had the blown save. He outpitched Strasburg that day. Six and two thirds, seven hits, one run. It was an unearned run. And the bullpen blew it. Reds end up winning that game in 15 innings. Phillips bare hands and throws out Ender Enciarte. Well, those are the kind of plays you love to see Brandon Phillips make, but you don't want to see your little leaguer second baseman trying this on Saturday morning. I see him practice every day. Because when you see him make this play, you watch him eyeball that glove right into his hand. I mean, he gets his face right down there close, and he makes sure he gets it. It is just amazing how little leaguers. <laughs> it doesn't matter the sport. It'd be girls I mean, watching, you know, women's basketball and be boys watching Major League Baseball players and you think man, I, I can do that. Yep. And all of a sudden it <laughs> Jams the tip of your uh, you know, ring finger something like that trying to do it Breaking ball there to get ahead of Arroyo and two Locked him up Arroyo through hmm. leak one leaks gonna return the favor And once more to get him on strikes. <laughs> well, here you go, Chris. Brandon Phillips watching this one into the bare hand. I mean, that's concentration right there. I mean, when you are eyeballing it right into the hand. And you turn it around in your hand a little bit so you get a nice feel of it. Looking for the, a grip, probably a four seam grip before he throws it to first base. Under the glove of Frazier down the third baseline. And Pollock. The only diamond back with a hit. He has two of them. Single and a double. Now he had a double and a triple last night. AJ Pollock did. And just kind of works all over the top of that curveball. And Frazier goes to his right, unable to come up with the backhand. That's a tough hop right there. So now Para, he bounced out to the shortstop his first time up. They gave Todd Frazier an error on Man, that. Man, that is, that's as tough an error as I've seen all year long. For all the balls that we've seen sidestepped by infielders, only to have it go off their gloves, it should be errors. He went three or four steps to his right to make that backhand. And it looked like when he extended his left arm, he was still short of getting to where the ball hit. And that's a base hit into center field by Parra. They're going to wave in the runner. Throw by Hamilton, not in time. So two out damage by Pollock and Parra, and it's a four to two game. Well, the Diamondbacks aren't hitting the ball anywhere near as hard as the Reds are against Bronson Arroyo, but they're finding the spots. And they're making the most of two hits as they put two on the board. We'll see if they revisit that scoring decision. I would bet you 
that says that's going to be changed. Frazier will throw out gold. Oh, my goodness. Holy Moses. Wow. It is a one-run game, and there is no doubt as to hit or error on that play. I mean, he had all the time in the world. He's coming across the infield, momentum going to first base. The ball just flies out of his hand, and Bernardino just sees that ball go into the path of the base runner, and the runner will come around to score on it. All of this after Leak retired the first two batters in the inning. Frazier has been charged with two errors over the last three batters. And of course, the Reds have been the best defensive team in all of Major League Baseball. The highest fielding percentage, which doesn't tell you the entire story, but they had committed the fewest number of errors of any team in Major League Baseball. And now all of a sudden, we've got a ball game. And granted, we're only in the third inning, so it wasn't like this thing was time to mail it in. And the Diamondbacks are a hit away from tying the game. And with a pretty good hitting left-handed catcher up there, and Miguel Montero, who lined it right back to Mike Leake very sharply first time up. Schmidt carrying the tying run out there at second base, two and one on Montero. And now three balls in a strike. First time and a hard one hopper this time. And boy, you get thrilled by that throw to first bake. The leak is not happy. Little frustration.
a week from Sunday, June the 8th. Half price with the Reach Magazine family ticket offer. First 8,000 kids next Sunday. 14 and younger receive a kid's Brandon Phillips growth chart thanks to College Advantage. 381 REDS for tickets. Love to have you for this first extended homestand of the year. The Reds will have the Giants in for three beginning on Tuesday night. Night games Tuesday and Wednesday. Afternoon game on Thursday. Then night games Friday and Saturday against Philadelphia. The afternoon tilt Sunday. And then the Dodgers in town for three games beginning Monday night. That will... That'll be a four-game series, I beg your pardon, against the Dodgers. The 8th, and nine, or the 9th, the 10th, and 11th, all night games, and then the 12th, an afternoon game. As Rocco, a grand slam his first time up. This one will drift some 400 feet, but caught at the warning track. Well, he did not miss that one by much. You know, Bronson likes pitching half of his games here in this ballpark. Told me yesterday the chase field plays very big, especially during the gaps. It's 407 feet to center field, 413 of those little gaps out there. And what is that, a 30 high foot wall out there? Well, the downside is, is that the ball, because the air is very dry here, that the ball on his curveball doesn't quite break as much as it does when he gets around sea level in humidity. Not that. We're very high as far as altitude here. About 15, 1600 feet. Maybe a little bit less than that. I think 800 at the, at the stadium. Oh, at the ballpark. Okay. So that, really that, that beats a heck out of nothing, though. You're right. But it really doesn't. It doesn't grab at all when you're say a course field. And that explains, of course, why the. Rockies go off offensively when they're at home because curveball just kind of roll up there and they are just it's not quite the same here, but they don't snap off like they do elsewhere. By the mound off the bat of Santiago and two are out. Well, right now is the time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo. We might show it during an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Pitcher, Mike Leach. A 4 3 ball game. Reds were feeling mighty good about things just a few minutes ago. Ahead 4 to 1. Diamondbacks were batting in the third with two out, nobody on base. And then bang, bang, bang. Contact from the next three batters. We these saw guys, that Pollock had a double and they gave an error. These guys right here can't even look at each other without smiling. After that first pitch curveball, Leak swings and misses, laughs at, at Arroyo. Breaking ball out over the screen and out of play it remains two and two. I mean the result of the game obviously is much more important in the big picture. But between these two guys, I mean bragging rights forever. If one of them is able to get a base hit off the other. I mean, that's backyard bragging rights. Well neither one has even put the ball in play. League has struck out twice, Arroyo once. It's a one run game.
Cubs game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replays, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and so much more. Download the app from the App Store or visit Reds.com today. And your day with you down here by the Reds dugout. Matt Latos made another step in coming back today. He made a start for the Louisville Bats in Columbus, and I know the Reds are going to be happy with these numbers right here. Four and two-thirds innings he went tonight. Just three hits, did not give up a run. Walked two batters and struck out three. He threw 81 pitches, 46 strikes. So Brian Price has said all along that it'll be at least one more rehab start, but... After they look at those numbers and the amount of pitches he threw, who knows? Day two. Well, that would mean Thursday if Louisville plays every day this upcoming week. If that's where his last start will be at the AAA level, and that's not a given. Just because he pitched in AAA doesn't mean his next one can't be a double A. But that would be Thursday of this upcoming week. Then you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That could be Tuesday of the following week where we might see Leto sometime in that Dodgers series. That would be very interesting. Because no time could be too soon to get Matt Leto's back in your rotation. That ball is blistered by Prado right into the mitt of Schumacher. By the way, they did indeed go back and do what we thought they would do. And that is change the ball that was scored an error off the bat of A.J. Pollock. An error given to Todd Frazier. It is scored a double. An RBI single by Para. And then the ground ball by Goldschmidt. It is a throwing error, obviously, on Frazier. So three hits, one error in that inning. So one of the two runs earned against Mike Leake in that inning. You know, don't you think it's time since they now have put in replay to Central Command in New York. They've got a big panel of TVs, 12 different angles that you can see a play on to determine whether the umpires got it right or wrong. Isn't it maybe time to take the official scores away from the local guy and make those official scoring in New York where they can replay it from every different angle and have guys who are pros doing it as full timers? On the ground to short, and that's the second out of the inning. But the only question I would have about that is, because because I, I don't mind having the local guys do it, because I think most of the time, especially at our ballpark, I can't speak for all of them, but I don't know if there are better quote-unquote baseball guys in the group of official scorers the Reds have. My only question is, if you're going to go down that route, who's the guy that's sitting in Central Command in New York? Well, I mean... I mean, the guy here... When you're in person, unlike a replay where, you know, there's a lot of things going on and it's a, the, the, the speed of the action and so on and so forth. I think a guy who saw that play would see the play better than anybody could watching it off a television monitor. Okay. He saw that play in person and he awarded it an error. He saw it on replay and came back and changed it to a double. So upon well, but I'll, I'll bet you, I'll bet you he didn't cheat because he originally scored it a double. Then went to an error, and now they come back to a double. You and I know how this works. A lot of that's word of mouth up there in the press box. That could be eliminated.
brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. And by B-Dubs, spend $30 on a gift card for dads and grads. They'll give you a $5 bonus. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Temperatures climbing as they do in summer months all over America. But my, do they climb here in the desert. They're already regularly up over 100 degrees. Roof wide open. On a beautiful night for baseball, not a cloud in the skies above. And the Reds with a 4-3 lead, top of the order. Billy Hamilton, one for two. Rounded out to the first baseman leading off the game. Single to right, stole the base. Was stranded at third in the second inning. One and two on Billy Hamilton. First time we've seen uh, Tony LaRusso. As there's a fly ball into left field. Of course, LaRusso just named the president of baseball operations for the Arizona Diamondbacks franchise, sitting alongside their team president, Derek Hall. And really, those are the two guys that are going to run this franchise. Hall on the business side has been here for a number of years. Their primary general managing partner is a West Virginia University grad, Ken Kendrick. Kevin Towers, the current general manager, but now Towers has a boss in the Hall of Fame manager to be this summer, Tony LaRusso. And jam shot one hopper. And thrown out as Schumacher, two away here in the Reds' fifth inning. What did you think of that move by the Diamondbacks, Mr. Welsh? That was very interesting, you know, that Obviously, a guy like Tony La Russa, once he gets baseball in his blood, it's just hard to get it out. I mean, he's made plenty of money. He is in the Hall of Fame. There's not much more that he can do except go sit back and retire. And he's got a number of charities that he's involved with very deeply. But that call back to baseball is always probably nagging him. And I think it's good for baseball to bring him back. And it'll probably be ultimately very good for the Diamondbacks. Of course, La Russa was extremely instrumental in the implementation and really the creation of Major League Baseball's instant replay system. And you know, Chris and I had a chance to attend a seminar, and you could tell at that seminar with Joe Torre running it, as that one is caught by Goldschmidt in front of the Reds' dugout, and the Reds go quickly in order for the back-to-back -back innings.
Gold Star Pen Campaign that honors families of fallen service members. To learn more, visit goldstarpens.org. A great organization. You can use your help if you're able. Diamondbacks scored in the first. The Reds got a grand slam from Devin Mezzarocco in the second inning. Arizona scored twice in the third inning. And here we are in the bottom of the fifth and a foul ball off the bat of Ender Enciarte. Eight, nine, and one in the Diamondbacks order against Mike Leak. Yeah, defensively, all good so far for the brand new first baseman, Roger Bernardina. Everything has been pretty much routine. He did have a chance to maybe flag down that error throw by Todd Frazier, but probably not. It was in the way of the runner coming down the line. Not sure anybody would have caught that. Enciarte and Nate of Venezuelan. Diamondback signed him in 2008, made his way through their minor league system. A very fast runner, an outstanding defender with the organization's best outfield on. Philadelphia picked him up in the Rule 5 draft, returned him, never got a chance to play in a game with the Phillies. And then Arizona got him back, returned in that Rule 5 selection. This season, the first year he's ever had a chance to play at the big league level, 3-2. and two. Well, Leak is missing, but tonight he's just not, not missing by much. Fair ball down into the corner. And now the Diamondbacks have a tying run at second base with nobody out to begin the bottom of the fifth inning. And they're down the number eight hitter who hits that ball. So you got Bronson Arroyo coming up with one thing on his mind. Pretty good at bat here by Inkiarte. Pitcher, Bronson Arroyo. So now Royo, who has a pair of sacrifices on the year, he's trying to advance that runner down to third base. And we mentioned NC Arte runs very, very well. And not a lot of experience playing in situations like this. And that ball's thrown in the center. The runner will not advance. Yeah, good job by Billy Hamilton because as soon as he saw that pickoff play develop, he was on the charge and coming right in there towards second base. He's playing shallow anyway. We see him moving right away. I mean, if he's standing out there as a spectator, that gives the guy at second base a much better chance of moving on to third. Good heads up play. Foul ball. Well, sometimes it's a reaction after the strikeout right there. Bronson Royal looking back at Mike Leak. Big laughing. Little smirk of a smile by Arroyo. Well, this is where you really want to make it tough on Arroyo to get it down now. Got a strike on him. Pitching tough. Now Bernardino. Picks it up, puts a tag on Arroyo, and the runner advances with a sacrifice. So the tying run is 90 feet away with one Seven out. AJ Pollock coming up, a perfect two out of two in the game. Ball right down the line right there. I think Bernardino wasn't sure what to do with it. And maybe realized, well, we'll take an out right there, even if it moves the runner over. I'm not so sure that's a great play. That ball looked like it was going foul. And once it gets off that grass, it will go foul. Arroyo at that time goes into an 0 2 count. Especially given the fact that that is the tying run. And 
Field in and Pollock waiting. Leak out of the regular windup and quickly ahead, nothing in two. Pollock has struck out just 36 times in 172 at bats on the year. Started two and is able to hold off. One ball and two strikes. Now to one, two. Barely making contact, Pollock, but contact to stay alive. Back to the mound, and Leak will play to first. Gets he out there, and the runner stays put at third. Two outs in the inning. One more big one to go to maintain this one-run lead. Right fielder, hey, you may notice that white substance. It's on the bill of the cap of Mike Leak. It's also on the back of the cap. And we've been seeing many times this year. There's a couple of pitchers that have been caught using pine tar. Well, pine tar is an Ill illegal substance to apply to your hand or your body, or especially the baseball. But you can use rosin, and that's what that is. Mike Leak uses a lot of rosin. He goes behind the bag or behind the pitching rubber, picks up a bag of rosin, tosses it around up and down in his hand a little bit, and then wipes some of it off on his cap so he doesn't apply it directly to the baseball. A lot of people have asked me, what is that stuff? Now you know. Now league going to zero in on Gerardo Parra, who's one of two in the game. He knocked in a run with a single in that two-run third inning on a ground ball back up through the middle. Looked like he went around, he did. One and one. <laughs> Tying run stands at third. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Reds four, Diamondbacks three. And now League jumps ahead as he did on Pollock. One ball and two strikes. It's a nice block right there in that pitch down and into the left-handed batter that wound up in the dirt. Yeah, that's where you have confidence in your catcher to be able to waste this pitch. You're ahead in the count. That's exactly where you want to throw it. So the man on third base, you've got to have full confidence that your guy can block it. Frazier. Set his feet, make a good throw, the inning is over. A leadoff double, and he's left to third. And the Reds still lead by a run.
Tree filling up fast to get your group on board. Call Red's Group Sales at 513-765-7600. And by the way, the Reds and Fox Sports Ohio would love to send out a special get well wish to a couple of Reds fans, Logan Stratman and Ashley Harris. They are both watching tonight's game at the Ohio University, at the Ohio State University Hospital tonight. So, Logan and Ashley, all the best. We're thinking of you. Watching tonight up in Columbus. Jay Bruce to lead things off. He is singled and lined out to left field. We'd also like to send out get well wishes to Tim Kress out of Carmel, Indiana. Going through some health issues as well. And Tim, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Big Reds fan. Big pop up by Jay Bruce. And that's out number one. Well, the Reds have been so quiet. It looked like it was going to be a big night against Arroyo. They got one hit in the first, five hits, including a grand slam in the second inning. They got two hits when a double play into the third. Well, ever since that double play ball off the bat of Roger Bernardina, Nary a base runner and Nary a hard hit ball. Eight in a row now for Arroyo. Told you both the Brewers or the Brewers are blasting 11 to 3 over the Cubs. That game is in the eighth inning, and the Cardinals are getting hammered by the Giants. It is 9 to nothing. And a game started by Adam Wainwright. We saw Wainwright on Sunday night dealing at Great American Ballpark, twirling a shutout. Two and two on Frazier. The Giants team is rolling. They are see them starting Tuesday night. They're going to hang on and win that game tonight to go to 36 and 19. They are the only team in baseball yet to lose 20 games. A little show me fastball right there by Arroyo. I bet the ranch he's coming with another breaking ball because he's thrown most every pitch except that last one as a curveball or some variation of it. That was a fastball and he just missed inside. How about that? Well, a reminder coming up later on first our Miller time Roger moment brought to you by Miller Light. That's the first walk issued by Diamondbacks pitching in the first two games of this series. So now Bernardino one on and one out. Bernardino with a big hole over on the right side with Goldschmidt holding on Todd Frazier. Talking about the Giants, those other teams in the National League West, one of them being, of course, the, the Diamondbacks. But well, Colorado lost again tonight. The Dodgers lost to the Reds two nights ago. They lost to the Pirates last night. No score in the third inning tonight. But what we're getting at ultimately is the Giants now have a seven and a half game lead over the second place team in that division. Colorado it could be six and a half depending on what if the Dodgers win but if they lose they go to seven and a half back that is hands down by a mile the largest lead seven and a half would be of any team in baseball in any division well it is but those records of those second and third place teams are good enough to be either in first or very close to first place in the wild card I guess a little early in the year. You're not even into the month of June yet, are you? And you're talking about a wild card. Mm -hmm. That Colorado team is now 12 and 19 on the road. And they're tearing it up at home. 
They lost in Cleveland tonight, 5-2. to two. Bernardino puts a charge into this one, straight away center field, and that is up against the wall. Rounding third is Frazier. They will wave him in. Bernardino with an RBI double and a little cushion for the Reds. They tack on a run and leave 5-3. to three. Well, Brian Price decided to put Roger Bernardina in the lineup and needed to put him somewhere. So he put him at first base because he has done so well against the Royal, he needed his bat. And he just wallops this ball nearly out of here as it goes off the center field wall. Well, that's a strong throw by Pollock, but he overthrew both the relay guys, and that's why there was no play at the plate. So now Mesoraco, who clubbed the grand slam back in the second inning and just missed hitting another one out of here to the deepest part of left center field, caught it the warning track by Pollock in the fourth inning. And there goes Bernardina, and he is out. That was a whale of a play by Miguel Montero, if indeed he is out. And Brian Price is going to go out and maybe ask for a challenge. I'm not so sure they're going to overturn this one. I think they got him. And so does Rob Coughlin, and so does Jay Bell, and now Brian Price. You'd only wonder what goes through the mind of Jay Bell every time he walks in his ballpark. Every time I see Jay Bell, no matter through the years and in most of his post playing career, has been spent with the Arizona Diamondbacks organization. But he was the man that scored the winning run. In game seven of the bottom of the ninth inning in the World Series to beat Mariano Rivera and the Diamondbacks and the Yankees back in 2001. When you talk about a moment that every player dreams about, Reds get a run and lead five to three. League Baseball. Luis Gonzalez against a drawn in infield, a broken bat single off Mariano Rivera plating Jay Bell. And the Diamondbacks won that 2001 World Series. I know there are a lot of fans, obviously Reds fans, that would, you know, argue that you know, 75 was a better World Series. Well, 
there were things that happened in that World Series in 2001 that have never happened before and never happened since. Diamondbacks won the first two games of that World Series, and it was a tail kicker. Then they went to New York, and you're talking about a month after 9-11, a little more than a month after 9-11. There you get a look at Luis Gonzalez, the hero of that team and that series for the Diamondbacks. Arizona led going into the ninth inning in games three, four, and five, and all three times the Yankees would come back to win it in the ninth or send it to extra innings where they would win game five. That had never happened in the history of baseball one time. It happened three times in three consecutive games. Or two of those games either tying or go ahead home runs off of Young Hung Kim. Yes. Almost to the same spot in the field. Yes. Then they uh, won the game in extra innings in game five. Then in game six, they come back to Arizona, Randy Johnson on the mound, and they just blow up Andy Pettit to send it to game seven. And it was, I mean, you're, you're talking about Kurt Schilling against Roger Clemens in game seven. The manager, Bob Brindley. You know, we've talked about the weather here in Arizona all the time, about how it never rains. And I mean, when I tell you it never rains, especially in October, it never rains. Yankees take a 2-1 lead. And just in the eighth inning, with the roof open, the wind starts swirling, and it starts to rain in the eighth inning of Game 7. And there's a base hit in the center field by Goldschmidt, and that's the way it begins in the Arizona Bottom of the sixth inning, down a run. And then his fate would have it. The rain would stop, didn't stop play. And the greatest closer, certainly the greatest postseason closer that baseball has ever known, Mariano Rivera, blew the save in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now Montero who is lined out to leak and hit a hard comebacker to leak. Wow. And you can't blame Montero for being frustrated. He has hit three balls right on the screws tonight, and all of them loud out. And pretty much right back through the middle, too. He had one line drive right at leak, another one that was snagged by leak, and that was a good play. And this one, perfect timing by... The shortstop Santiago to grab that one. Now Martin Prado really starting to heat up. Got off to a slow start this year. Had homered in back to back games. Coming into the series opener here last night. And while he did not make it three games in a row. Prado did have two hits, a run scored, and a run batted in. Our steel power performer. Last 12 games, up over 350, the batting average with 11 runs batted in. Goldschmidt every now and again if you don't keep an eye on him he'll will he will take off He's not going to be a 15 or 20 guy over the course of the season, but Five attempts so far this season successful three of the five
Two and one to Prada. It's a pretty good idea by Martin Prada right there. 2-0. Most guys looking for a fastball. They get a fastball. They're going to be hacking, but that was a perfectly placed pitch with good sink on it, right where Leak wanted it. That was a double pl double play ball waiting to happen. Took a hack there and fouls it back two and two. Just off that outside corner. Prado, or Prado, a guy who normally puts a bat on the ball. With that in mind, do you consider starting Goldschmidt with one out, down a run, here in the sixth inning? He's got a good lead over there. And it's what? Ball four? Ball four. Ball four. And he was going on the pitch. Tonight, one of seven with runners in scoring position. That one hit was a single by Parra to drive in Pollock in the third inning. And now they have two on for Hill, who has struck out and grounded out to the shortstop. And this one into left field. It'll fall in a hit. Tying run scores. 4-4 four, four here in the bottom of the six on a single by Aaron Hill. Five four, I beg your pardon. After the Reds got the run, please forgive me. They're in the top of the six inning, so it's a one-run game. Well, these Diamondbacks just keep pecking away and pecking away. No mistake, pitch there got a little bit too much of the plate for Mike Leak's liking and got to elevate it. Leak looking for a ground ball out of that pitch, but it drives the run in with a shot into the gap. Well, Jeff Pico, the Reds pitching coach, coming out to chat with Leak. 81 pitch mark right now for Leak. Tying one at third, go ahead, run at first, one out in the inning, and Owings coming up. Sam LeCure begins to throw in the Reds' bullpen. Not much of a threat to run over at first. Only one successful stolen base attempt. Owings has bounced into three double plays so far this year. And Leak has nine of them served up, which is among the leaders in the league. In fact, the leader in the National League coming into this ball game was Bronson Arroyo, of all people. Who has been traditionally a fly ball pitcher until this year? Those are updated for tonight. Try to chase that pitch down and away to get ahead at one and two. Those were the pitches that he got Pollock and Para on with a runner at third. 
to get the final two outs in the fifth inning. Especially that at bat to Pollock is a right-handed batter with a runner at third and only one out in the fifth. And gets Owings to swing and miss for the second out here in the sixth. Yeah, got him to chase two bad balls the last two pitches he threw. Pitchers pitches, they look like strikes, but they go from strikes to balls. And as our flamethrower strikeout brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. Little curveball down there in the 82 mile an hour range. And now Mesoraco making sure everybody in the infield knows what's going on here with two outs. You have the number eight batter up. There's action in the Diamondbacks bullpen. Tying one at third. And the go ahead run is at first. Ender Enciarte, the batter, he has bounced to second and doubled down the right field line. Strike one. Well, for the time being, they have Eric Chavez waiting in the on deck circle. And the only guy Leak is concerned about right now is a batter at the plate. Tying run at third, go ahead, run at first, two outs, last of the sixth inning, and an 0 and 1 count on Ender Enciarte. And that's a breaking ball for strike two. Boy, what a beauty right there. And that was a last minute decision changed by Devin Mezzarocco. Right before that, he had called for a fastball on away. And then he called timeout, patted himself on his chest protectors to say, I want to change this. And he did. He called for that curveball and he gets a strike out of it from Gary Cedarstrom. One and two now on Enciarte. And just off the outside corner to even the count. Oh, Deuce is wild here. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out. Leak okay is assigned with Mezzarocco and the break even pitch. Phillips to leak and they got him at first base. What a, play. what a play again by the amazing Brandon Phillips. Find me another second baseman in either league that makes that play. And a great play by Leak. Look at him covering this. Well, Kirk Gibson's out to Ooh, take a look. Boy. And I have no Awfully doubt close. that he will appeal the decision on this play. Yep, he is. This is a big call here. Well, it's a run value call. You got if he is safe, there's a score the run and they tie the game. I'll tell you that eh, Brandon Phillips seems to surpass himself every night.
Of course, the umpires are simply on the headphones to await the decision in New York. Well, this is a big decision for both of these managers. And man, that is one close play. They're showing it on the big screen here at Chase Field, and the fans seem to think that the runner was safe, obviously. Oh, boy. And he might be. They're seeing the same thing we are. Ooh, and then you look at it again. This is one of those where I, I don't know how in the world. It could be one of those where you, you can't overturn it. I don't know. We'll find out. He's out. So the call stands at first base. Gibson loses his appeal on the call at first. What a play. What a play. Phillips and also got help from his buddy Mike Leak on this play. This is about as tough as it gets, really, because you're trying to hit a guy on the run. Mike Leak gets there just before the runner. Ender in Ciarte. And if that throw's not right on the money, perfectly leading Mike Leak, it's a tie ball game, and it's a whole different deal right now. Well, apparently, that will be the final. Play of the game for Mike Leak. They already have a, a pinch hitter, Donald Lutz, standing in the on deck circle. Leak gives up four runs, three of which were earned runs. Allows six hits. And they have time to change your mind. I mean, maybe they get in a situation where Santiago reaches where they could send up Leak to bunt. So he is still officially in the game. They haven't hit for him yet. And Santiago, what's the call? He's calling him out. He must have had a foot out of the batter's box when he made contact with the ball. All you need to do is step across the plate with your foot right there and you're out. That is obvious as it comes. One foot is enough to do it. That'll be a put out for the catcher. And Mike Harkey, former number one draft pick by the Chicago Cubs, mm -hmm. is now the pitching coach for these Arizona Diamondbacks. He's out to make sure they know what they need to know about the pinch hitter, Donald Lutz. There's 
Hargy's got a son playing professional football in the NFL. Great player at UCLA, like his daddy. After every Reds game, Fox Sports Ohio breaks down the game and brings you the first interviews with Brian Price, along with some of the players. Reds Live is brought to you by Kings Honda. The last time we saw Donald Lutz, he was in the lineup against Zach Greinke the other night. And all he did was collect two hits in three at bats against a Dodger right hander, a double, a single, and scored a run. Well, it's a little bit of playing time with the Major League Club, as you know, last year, and then brought up just recently to replace Neftali Soto on the active roster. And he's getting a good long look at Arroyo here. Not necessarily going up there wailing on a 2-0 count. Takes a breaking ball on the outside corner. Uh, Donald, after he got cut off the major league team in spring training, was assigned to Pensacola Double A, which is kind of low for a guy who's 25 years old. They called him up to Triple A, probably in anticipation of bringing him up if indeed Joey Votto would be on the disabled list for an extended period of time, and that's what's happened. So he played five games in Indy, or in Louisville, that is. But after hitting 360 for the Wahoos in Pensacola. Also at six home runs, 16 driven in. Popped up on a 3 2 pitch, and Owings a shortstop out to get it. And here's Arroyo pitching in the seventh inning. He's allowed five runs and nine hits in the game. Eight of the hits, four of the five Senator runs Field. came in the first three innings. He has only allowed one run on one hit. The hit drove in his only walk. It was a one out pass to Frazier in the sixth, and then the double by Bernardino. Billy Hamilton, one of three, singled, stole a base in the second inning. Way off the mound, trying to get it back together after missing on three in a row to Hamilton with two outs. Three balls and a strike. Just kind of laying it right in there. Three and two. Curveball at 68 miles per hour is fouled out to the catcher to win the inning. Arroyo seven innings tonight. His night is over. His spot due to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Reds lead by a run.
closer to your Reds bobblehead collection. That's coming up this Wednesday, our Walt is Chapman. Big bobblehead giveaway Wednesday, June the 4th to the first 25,000 fans through the gate. Thanks to Coca-Cola, we'll see you Wednesday night at Great American Ballpark. Chapman hoping for an appearance, doing a little tossing out there with Jay Bruce. The we're only in the seventh the inning. Ass. It's a one-run game. And trying to protect the one-run game. First out of the Reds' bullpen is right-hander Sam LeCure. Game number 20 for Sam. Having a good year he is with a 1 2 9 run average. Chavez in the big leagues for a long, long time. Of course, he was the regular third baseman on some of those very, very good Oakland Athletics teams. It seemingly would reach the playoffs year after year, but would come up short in the postseason. And now the last number of years after so many injuries, especially to his back, that has really taken away what could have been a great career. He's had a very good career, but it could have been a great career. He was really a good player when he was healthy. He's trying to tell himself to lay off this big curveball. Here it comes again. He did lay off it. Chavez broke in after just a little more than one full year of minor league baseball. He was a first-round pick, the 10th overall, going all the way back to 96 by the Athletics. And there are a lot of young fans that maybe don't remember. This guy knocked in over 100 runs. Four out of five years. I mean, he went... 32 114 34 109 29 101 got hurt Came back 27 101 and then the injuries just began to mount Beginning in 2007 and just really never let up gone swinging to begin the inning Tomorrow Saturday a full day of major league baseball action Started Fox Sports 1 with the Braves and the Marlins. Then it's baseball night in America on Fox. Some will see Tampa Bay against Boston. Others the Pirates and the Dodgers. Our MLB doubleheader begins tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Continuing at 7 on Fox. A.J. Pollock, 2 out of 3. Couple of runs scored. But man, he had a huge at bat. The only time they got him out was in that fifth inning. He had a runner at third with a chance to tie the game and only one out. And Leak really worked him over, eventually getting him on a tapper back to the mound. His third hit of the game. And he has his fourth extra base hit in the last two nights. Double and a triple last night, a single and a pair of doubles tonight. Well, he did a really nice job on this slow curveball that seems to fool a lot of hitters, especially right handed. He just waits back. Maybe Sam got up a little bit higher than he wanted, but he stayed back on that ball and struck it right inside the line of third base. Manny Parra just got up to start throwing in the Reds bullpen with the left hander up here, but I doubt that he's going to get, get the call for Parra. Paul Goldschmidt, right hander, is next, and then you've got Miguel Montero. He's the lefty that Manny Parra would be looking at if we get that far. We mentioned that in the month of May, despite a 1.7 earned run average, 
Mike Leak does not have a single win this month. Twice in five starts, a blown save behind him. On the ground is short. And Santiago will throw out Cara for out number two. Well, I guess now, Chris, you know, the, the old adage in baseball is you never put the go-ahead run on base. But with arguably right now the National League's best run producer coming up and a base open at first. And knowing you have a left-hander getting ready for the man on deck in your bullpen, do you think about putting Goldschmidt on base? I don't think there's any question that you're not going to let him beat you right here. Now, if you're saying, look here, you've already talked that over with Devin Mezzarocco. Now, you could officially give him an intentional pass, or you could just pitch around him to the point where you don't let him do any damage. Well, down in the crouch position is a catcher, Mezzarocco. We'll see how much Goldschmidt gets to hit. Trying to get him to chase a breaking ball. The first pitch of the at bat. 1 0. It's a leading run producer in the National League over the last two seasons. And we showed you the numbers last night. It is by a wide stretch between first and second in runs batted in among National League players the last two seasons. Tying run at second, two out. Goldschmidt got a fastball in the outside corner. He might be up there just looking curveball, knowing that that's the pitch that LeCure prefers to get you out on. Why look for a pitcher you may not get? You see the difference 24 better than Freddie Freeman of Atlanta. Wow, Boy, that is a good pitch right there. That's the old Sam McCure special. I mean, as good as that curveball is, but look at the bend in that ball. And it is so hard to throw a ball to that side of the plate and have that much comeback action. If there's one pitch I could teach to a kid, that would be it. But it's hard to throw. Two and two. Goldschmidt up there talking to himself. I don't know if you're seeing a couple of those fastballs. It might be time to see you drop that little curveball on him. Down and away. Trying to hit it the other way. Another fastball down and away. Mesoraco gonna visit with LaCure three in a row. And yeah, that's a spoil job right there because he was staying back, did not want to be fooled on the curveball, and that's why it's such a slap swing on that fastball. Do the numbers for Goldschmidt with runners in scoring position this year. Brandon Phillips is standing right on that bag. Now he'll backpedal a little closer to his regular spot. And that is strike three called. How about LeCure saying back down against Goldschmidt? Not a chance.
Suite is the most technologically advanced suite at Great American Ballpark, ideal for groups of 30 to 45. I mean, you've got all the comforts with a private bar, upscale food, and most luxury suites have those things. But how about the latest high-tech gear provided by Norcom, including an 84-inch 4K LG interactive screen and more. 765-7600, the number to dial. How about that at bat, Lecure v. Goldschmidt? Well, let's take another look at it, but this time we'll call it our Mazda pitch by pitch. And Lecure wants to throw breaking balls early, and he does. He gets a fastball in there for a strike, and then he starts picking away at that outside corner. All this time, I think, Goldschmidt is looking for a curveball. Never gets another one. Pecking away at that outside corner, and finally a perfectly placed fastball on the knees on the black. And Sam McCure comes in and does it. Man, you got to love that guy. There is no doubt about it. All right, Evan Marshall is now the new pitcher coming on a right hander from the Arizona bullpen. And he's facing Skip Schumacher. Marshall did not allow an earned run in his first eight outings of the year. Got a win in his major league debut in early May. See, so he's got some giddy up to that fastball at 93 miles per hour. He's brought up on May the 6th. It's big boy. And his second best pitch behind that fastball is a changeup. Rarely uses anything else. Started the year down in AAA. Kind of jumps at you a little bit with his delivery. That would make your change up very effective. You can throw it with any kind of good arm speed. Oh, and to the count on Schumacher. We're in the top of the eighth inning. One and two to Schumacher, who tonight is one of three, singled his first time up. Just off that outside corner, two and two. Phillips to follow, and then Bruce. Let's have the big fella, Jonathan Broxton, ready to roll down in their bullpen. Ciarte will back up and make the catch for out number one. Arroyo, seven innings, nine hits, five runs, all earned. He walked one batter, struck out three. Second base. His buddy Brandon leaked Phillips. six innings, six hits, four runs, three earned, walked one batter, struck out four. And both pitchers right now, the pitchers of record. Brandon one hit and three at bats is grounded into a double play singled into right center and fouled out to first but that does not tell the story of making a positive contribution to your team for Brandon Phillips in this story of tonight's game because two of the plays he has made on defense have just been out of this world including the biggest play of the night to end the bottom of the sixth inning.
Maybe that got him on the left big toe there, the front part of the foot. And the one two pitch. It's one on and foul out of play. That's the other part. It, it's not to pick a fight, it's not to get into a debate which seemingly never ends between the old school and the sabermetricians and all those kinds of things. But well, when you're privileged enough to watch this guy play every single day, there is no metric that can tell you what this guy means to his team when he's in that lineup every single day. Popped up to the right side, two outs in the inning. And here are two of the plays we're talking about. Our John Morrell hot dog plays of the game. Now you pick your choice right here. How about him going to his right behind the second base back, what? fielding and throwing in one motion? What? And then this one is really amazing. This is a tying run coming in from third base right here. And if that throw is not right on the money, he is safe as it was. It was a replay. That the umpires in New York had to take a look at in order to finally render a decision on. Well, in this ball game, the defense have gi has given, and it has taken away. Big shift here again, put on Bruce. We have seen this kind of alignment pretty regularly, especially for National League Central Division teams that see Bruce a lot. And they play that second baseman out in short right field. Two on Jay Bruce, who against this similar kind of shift had a single his first time up. He's been retired three in a row since. Arizona back, the last of the eighth inning. Reds in front by a run. minutes before the start of every game. Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Be coming your way a, a little bit later tomorrow. A little bit later start time tomorrow. And now it's our fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Take a look at that. A whole gang on the Reds Live set. 
Ryan Giesenswald, Jeff Pecoro, and company. Producer Ken Dream Weaver, Ronnie Millinor there in the middle. It's a good group. You think they're all still awake? Oh, yeah. You kidding me? They got to work tonight. That's what I mean. <laughs> All right, we've got all kinds of changes here now. We started short where Kozar takes over, pushing his buddy Ramon Santiago over to third. And Todd Frazier now goes from third base to first base. And Miguel Montero to face a new Reds pitcher, Jonathan Broxton, off of his glove, handled by Phillips. One pitch and one out for the big man, Jonathan Broxton, who's off to a great start. Since coming back from the disabled list. Baseman, Look at those Toronto. numbers. Uh, he's throwing so many strikes, Broxton is. And that has been really the key for him. He's throwing strikes with his breaking ball, his fastball. I mean, there was a time when he averaged about 97 or 98 miles an hour on every fastball he threw. He's no longer there. I think he's a better pitcher now than he ever has been. So you should see him regularly in this ballpark. When Broxton was the closer for the Los Angeles Dodgers, he came up to the big leagues in 05, became their closer in 2008, stayed in that role until he was traded to Kansas City in 2012. Actually signed as a free agent to go to Kansas City. One and one to Martin Prado. Boy, they really used him a lot in Los Angeles, too. I mean, his second year in the major leagues, first year in, he pitches 14 games, came up out of the minor league. Then he went 68 games, 83 games, 70 games, 73 games, and 64 before he finally became injured in Los Angeles. Well, they had some kind of bullpen, man. They did, but you talk about going to a horse year after year, game after game. They, they just wore him out. Had his elbow surgically repaired by Dr. Tim Kremchak over the winter. Sent him back during spring training, but he's your eighth inning guy now. We end one on Prado. Aaron Hill to follow. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, you can see Mesoraco really trying to to pump up Broxton out there on the mound from behind the plate. His number one cheerleader back there after Broxton walked off the back of the mound following that ball three pitch. Straight away center field. A lot of room out there. There are a lot of well hit balls that go to die if you hit them to the deepest part left center to straightaway center to right center not only the distance but the height of the wall is part of the hitters backdrop Scoring single to left center to make it a one run ball game in the sixth. And now bats with the bases empty and two out in the eighth.
Two and one on Aaron Hill. Hamilton will drift back into right center, inning over. Round out, two fly ball outs, a perfect day for Broxton. We're off to the night. Reds lead by a run. Any time to take a look at our Honda game summary. Kevin Mesoraco, a grand slam in the second inning. After Arizona had scored in the first, so the Reds had the lead. But then back came the Diamondbacks in the third. Parra knocked in a run with a single throwing error by Frazier, allowed Parra to score. That made it a one run game. Roger Bernardino pushed it to two. With a double off the center field wall, plating Frazier. Aaron Hill would knock in a run in the sixth inning to make it five to four, and that's where we stand at the end of eight. Evan Marshall on for his second inning of work. He retired the side in order. Will face Frazier, a pinch hitter in the pitcher spot, is Chris Heisey. It's Jonathan Broxton's spot due up after all the changes the Reds made. Going to be Frazier, apparently Heisey, and then Mezzarocco against Marshall. This guy rears back and lets it fly, doesn't he? He sure does. Haven't heard from our buddy Jim Day in a while tonight. Probably. What do you think he's been doing? Worn out from all the sun he's getting out here in Arizona? Probably. Probably still adjusting to West Coast time. Well, you know, when you hang out at Charlie Sheen's house for you lose track of two time. or three nights in a row and you spend the night over there, well, it's only fitting you'd be a little run down. One and two on Frazier. Not to suggest, you know, anything up but just sitting around talking baseball. Because as Jim is reporting, if there ever was a, a baseball guy, it is uh, Charlie Sheen. Am I right about that, Jimbo? There's no question about it. He's a diehard guy. <laughs> you guys have been doing such a good job. I've just been letting you go. Uh, this is quality stuff. Boy, flattery will get you everywhere. I do have a report coming up. I know you do. But yeah, I was one. just saying I was told that. And I, I, it made me think that we have really missed you tonight. Well, we got to take care of all of our fine sponsors and all the fine sponsored elements. So I've just kind of stood out of the way, enjoying the game as a baseball guy would. One and two to count on Todd Frazier. What? 
pretty good battle here. First two pitches and he had bad. Marshall just threw a, a couple of heaters and, and dared Frazier to hit him. Frazier fouls away a couple, takes a couple. And now a 2 2 count. And probably a pretty safe bet. 2 and 2. Frazier's going to get some more gas. And Frazier loves that fastball. Changeup. Yeah, a lot of tilt to it there. 88 mile per hour changeup. And Frazier out to begin the inning. All right, Jim Day. How are we doing, boys? Nice to hear from you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here, in fact. You know, we told you earlier about uh, Matt Latos had a successful rehab start for the Louisville Bats today, and more good news on the Reds' injury front. Joey Votto, for the first time today, took live batting practice at Great American Ballpark, also sprinted in the outfield, we're told. Trainer Paul Lassard said he came through it just fine so far to this point. Now he's due or eligible to come off the disabled list tomorrow. I'd be shocked if we saw him tomorrow or even Sunday, but... A big step was made today. Well, that is very, very good news because the Reds certainly need him and want him back ASAP. Well, they want him back healthy. Oh, and one on Heisey. You know, Chris said, uh, I've asked you before about a pitcher coming back, and we've talked at length about Matt Latos and you know sort of a schedule that he might be on now I don't know if you can speak to a position player and how much time you might need to to get back and, and not only get back physically I mean that's just part of something that the rehab folks and, and on the great job that they're doing and the trainers with Paul Lassard as high as he's gone on three pitches but as far as timing and coming back to him well Look at the problems right now that Jay Bruce has had since coming off the disabled list. It's yeah, hard. I mean, there's yeah, a reason there's why a you of. have a month worth of spring training where the last couple of weeks, and especially the last week, you're playing full games. You're getting four and five at bats every game. And prior to that, you're getting lots and lots of batting practice. And when you're on the disabled list and you're just now swinging the bat like Joey Votto, he just. Hello. Hello again, Mezzarocco, a salami earlier, and now a solo blast to make it a two-run lead. Man, just when you thought Mezzarocco was starting to slow down. Bam, bam. Two home runs, five runs batted in. And Mezzarocco playing in his 26th game has 26 runs batted in. Well, he's the guy that defies what happens when you come off the disabled list. Because you remember when he went on the list with a blown hamstring? He was on fire, maybe the hottest hitter in the league. And he came off the disabled list swinging the bat very well, too. For a couple of games. And he is back swinging it, thinking he's going to get a fastball off of Evan Marshall. He got it and launched it. And there's a base hit in the right field by Ramon Santiago. Second time in Devin Mezzarocco's career. He's hit two home runs in a game, the other being on August the 3rd last year. Two home runs against St. Louis. You know, Chris, back to the theme you brought up. You touched on it. Jay Bruce did not go down for a minor league rehab after... 15 days on the DL. We don't know what Votto has planned. We do know that Devin Mezzarocco, both times when he started the year on the DL, he went to rehab before they activated him. And then after he injured his hamstring against Atlanta, he went on rehab again before coming back to the big league club. You wonder if maybe, and everybody's different, there's a lesson to be learned somewhere in there. Now, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's up to every individual player. How I mean, Jay Bruce was only on the list, I think, for 15 days, and maybe he felt like he didn't need it. I, I don't draw any correlation there. I just think some guys are different. Some guys need that extra live batting practice before they come back. Some guys feel like they can come back when they're, you know, 85 or 90 percent. Other guys feel like they can't come back until they're 100 percent. So you don't really know the ball player is the guy that has to let you know as the manager and the training staff where how you feel where you are. But it's tough to get up the game speed because the game at this level it's fast. And now Kozart puts a charge into one deep left center field but able to run it down Pollock and that'll end the inning but second home run of the night by Mezzarocco who's knocked in five of the six. 
And now Aronis Chapman will have a chance to come in and nail it down. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Tomorrow night, Johnny Cueto will get the ball for the Reds. He's had such a spectacular season. Bad luck, his first start on this road trip, giving up four unearned runs in L.A. He will take that minuscule 1.8 earn run average to the hill against right hander Brandon McCarthy. A little bit later starting time. By Arizona standings, anyway. The game has started 6 40. Tomorrow, 7 10. So, Reds Live gets underway at 9 30. Our game coverage begins at 10 o'clock. Reds in front, 6 4. And they'll hand the ball. To their closer, Aroldis Chapman, after great work out of the bullpen by Sam LeCure and Jonathan Broxton. And great work by the guy behind the plate to give him an extra run. That would be Devin Mazzarocco. He has had a tremendous night, and now all he wants is three more outs. And they've got the bottom of the order coming up. So really couldn't work out any better for the Reds unless they had a couple more runs on the board. Going to be uh, Owings and Ciarte. Although they have Cody Raw standing in the on deck circle. Now, Aroldis Chapman does not have good memories of this ballpark, at least last season. He pitched in two games, threw one plus inning, faced 10 batters, gave up four hits, three earned runs, walked two batters, hit a batter. And if you can believe it, of the 10 batters he faced, Aroldis Chapman did not strike a single hitter out. That's when the Reds came out here and, and they watched two games get away from them and they should have won. Those were the first two games of the series. They had to win the finale to avoid getting swept. Out of play.
Two and two the count on Chris Owings. Trying to throw the breaking ball on the 2 2 pitch of slider, and it stayed high. Got to make them earn a two run lead. Chapman, a long look in. And now the payoff pitch. Threw him another breaking ball. Santiago charges and a nice play by Ramon Santiago. Boy, Chapman must be gaining tremendous confidence in some of the secondary pitches. I can't remember how many times we've seen him throw three two slide. It's number seven. You're right, Tom, and I think that it's really his choice, too. We see him out there shaking off Devin Mezzarocco from time to time, shaking until he gets to his pitch of choice, which is the way it ought to be. Who knows better than the pitcher what he feels like he can get over the plate? Oh, and one on Cody Walsh, the pinch hitter. Snaps. I don't know if that was a change up or a slider. It yeah, might hard to tell sometimes because they're about the same speed. That looks like a yeah. slider. We saw him throw those what change ups in Los Angeles the other night. I think you and I were both. Then you come back with 101. That's just not fair. Now yeah, hang with him. That's even fast in slow motion. <laughs> God, dang. I, you know, I mean, 101, 102. I mean, we sit up here, we're lusting enough to watch this guy every time he comes into a game. But I don't know. There are just some pitches, whether it's a location, maybe the ballpark, just a different look. That last pitch looked to me just sitting here like it was 112. I don't know how Cody Ross felt. Nick Evans now the batter. He's a pinch hitter. First pitch slider strike one. He's thinking what what that fastball looks like. Hmm. Fastball. I mean the slider didn't look that fast. For a fastball. To the count. Came back with gas, and that'll end the inning and end the game. So the Reds even a series at a game apiece. Final count tonight of 6 4. Chapman a perfect inning. Couple of strikeouts. Phillips spectacular on defense, helped save the game. And Mezzarocco, a pair of home runs, including a grand slam. And reasons to smile for Mezzarocco and Chapman. Our Nissan drives of the game, the Grand Slam that came off Arroyo in the second inning. And then a big insurance blast coming with one out, two outs in the ninth. Final score, Reds win it. And it's time now for Reds Live, the post game. Cincinnati Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by Chevy. Visit your tri state Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, ranked number one in the United States in pediatric cancer care, according to U.S. News and World Reports, best children's hospitals in America.